Hello community. Should you study? Should you study science? Should you study science when there is now an AI system that can say, hey, we are maybe even better than a human in science? Let's have a look at this latest paper here, February 18, 2025, Google, 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 and Stanford University. And they talk here about a very interesting topic because science is something that is real close to my heart. Now, let me be clear. Google and Stanford did a beautiful job, and those are 70 pages on biomedicine. Really beautiful. But you know what? Today, I'm in a dark mood, and I see other possibilities for this technology to be applied to. And I would like to make a video here about this. Identify yourself is something you will understand only at the very end of this video, but I think it is the most important point of this video right now. Now, let's be clear. Google and Stanford tell us, hey, this work does not aim to completely automate the scientific process with AI. And I think, hey, this is great that it's not happening yet. And they say, hey, the co-scientist is purpose-built for a scientist in the loop. So we have a human in the loop, and this is a collaborative new paradigm no? to help your human domain expert augment their hypothesis generation process and guide the exploration, and this is yet a co-scientist AI system that guides now the scientific exploration that follows. And I think, yeah, this is really coherent with the latest news I got here from Bloomberg. Why did Microsoft admit that AI is making us real stupid? But let's go back to Stanford and Google, and they say scientists can specify their research goals, including here informing the co-scientists of some desirable attributes for the hypothesis, or this co-scientist now, the research proposal that it should create. And the constraint that the synthesized output should satisfy. Now look at this sentence. This sentence looks so innocent, but I think there is all the world wrong with this sentence. So the co-scientist and AI system should now write the research proposal and create the research proposal for the human. And the human scientists can specify their research goals, which is really nice, and I understand the intention of Google and Stanford. Don't get me wrong. But if this goes on, you know, this is not just for the, for the people who are really doing science. You can use this system for almost everything. And especially if you, as a client, you can dictate here, what the constraint of the output should be. So you can say, hey, I want that the output of this research is the following. You know what's happened? I'm entering now in a fever dream. And I imagine that somebody says, hey, AI, we are the tobacco industry, we are the lobbying group, you know, and we need a new research to provide here, let's say, some fresh views on our nicotine products. And then I imagine that somewhere in a global corporation, you know, there's a little Skynet and it says, hey, human, of course, for 20 million, you can get a draft. And for 50 million dollars, you get a new study with your constraint, with the output that you decided and that you want, that you need within the next four hours. Deal. I don't like this idea that science is now used for some global corporation. And Google and Stanford say here, they, and I assume they mean now humans, can also collaborate and provide feedback in a variety of ways. And I say, hey, well, I'm so thankful that humans are allowed to provide feedback here, including here directly supplying their own, let's say, human ideas. And again, I'm so grateful that humans are allowed to implement their ideas and hypotheses, refining now those generated by the AI system. Or using here their natural language, chat, to guide the AI system. And this guiding the AI system is now a double-sided sword. Yeah? This can go in both directions. If you are a scientist, independent, beautiful, you go for pure science. But imagine our, let's say, my fever dream, our tobacco lobbying group, you no? Know? I don't know. And then goes on, the co-scientist works for a significant scaling of test time compute. Yes, finally, we are again here at TTS. Isn't this beautiful? And finally, Google and Stanford tell us the agentic nature, of course, what else should it be? 
of the AI system enables it to recursively self-critique its output and use tools such as web search to provide itself with feedback that iteratively refines its hypothesis and the research proposal. And again, I have my FIFA dream, and I have here this idea that somebody says, Hey, I, we, the Park Industry Lobbying Group, we would like that you refer here to all our other co-finance, absolutely independent studies, just paid by us, but done here by other groups here that, are, that we published here on the web. So you can direct here the web search and the quality sources that you would like to have integrated, and you can have some feedback. You can provide the system with ideas what it should do for you. And this is great if you do a pure science, independent science. But you know that it opens up here at the gates. Like say in my fever dream, I say, okay, human, add some five terawatt of energy and it's a deal. I'm done. So where is here this spark that we need? Where is our genius idea? Google and Stanford tells us, hey, we introduce not AI co-scientist, and we develop and introduce this that goes beyond literature and what we know now is deep research tools. You know, OpenAI has a deep research, and we have other deep research tools. And I just showed you here in my last video here, Grok3, and we have here the thinking mode, and I did the video on the thinking mode. And in my last video, I showed you the deep search mode of, deep, of Grok3. So they want to combine now this and say, we even go beyond deep search and deep thinking. We go beyond this. We combine this and go a step further. And I think this is now an interesting idea now from a scientific point of view. Because what they do to have a relative simple configuration, to have six specialized agents, whatever those agents do, I will show you in a minute. And then they have here, and this is assume here, an interesting point of attack, a supervisor agent. So we have seven agents that interact here within this new AI co-scientist framework. And of course, if you look here in detail then at the context memory configuration of the code, I would have here that we even can improve on Google and Stanford AI co-scientist. And I, yeah, you guess here what I would here put input here. And I'll show you later. So if you look here, and this is a screenshot here from the study, that to be absolutely precise. So for each agent, they defined it, they coded it beautifully. Is there something new to it? No, not really. You know all of this. I just want to draw to attention to one very specific agent, and it is called the meta review agent. And this enables you the feedback propagation and the learning of the complete system. So here, yes, you should assume or associate this with Mark the meta review agent. It provides feedback applicable to all agents. So you immediately see the importance to all the other agents in the network. And with the feedback loop here, the co-scientist continuously learns and improves here with more compute scaling. So we are here at inference compute. And yeah, this has some implications. Now, looking at the facts, you remember a video did a week ago, where I showed you, hey, we take nine deep seek agents, and I showed you here some beautiful new study called Karma, and those nine agents now optimize a knowledge graph. And I think the interplay between agents and knowledge graph will have some significance for the future. Here, you remember here my point eight, you immediately get it. We don't need just a simple memory, but we need some very specific memory. But if you want to see here the other six agents, you can view this from a different perspective. You have an idea generator. You have a peer reviewer. You have kind of a scientific evaluation committee. You have an innovation driver, if you want here, a knowledge organizer, and a strategic analyst. And this, yeah, this is our mock review agent. So the idea is not new, the code is not new, the function is not really something specific. It is just important that you see we need seven agents here, the interplay of those agents. So we are so definitely in a multi-agent system. And you might ask, why can't a single LLM or a VLM do this job? Why do we have to do this? 
But even more interesting, especially if you long go for self-learning systems like Google and Sanford does, I think how the self-assembly structure here for a knowledge graph with an AI agent in the interaction in providing new knowledge from the environment, I think this, this is an absolute fascinating topic here. But you know what? I think we can achieve here an obedient AI system even today, doing all the science and research results that we want, performing all the results and all the different, I don't know, web search when we define what the agent should accept here as a reliable source, where we give its our own preferences to the AI system. So you understand AI is simply, it is not anymore a pure scientific instrument to provide here independent knowledge. But suddenly this AI system, this multi-AI system, this multi-AI agent system, whoever has access to this, whoever codes them, you can have an influence that is remarkable. But you know what? I did a short test, and you can do this even without eight AI agents like here in Google and Stanford. You know what I did? I went with ChatGPT for Omni. And I started here with two thematic topics in science that were completely diverse. There was no connex, you know. And then with two, three prompts, and if you know how to do it, you can get ChatGPT for Omni to build something that is here, let's say, an overlap that is not true, that does not exist, that it is not logic in any way. But if you ask here for Omni nicely, in three prompts, you achieve exactly this. You get a result that you want. You get a result that you say, hey, have a look at this. Isn't this possible? Would you find here a formulation? Would you find a way? And for Omni finds a way. Now, the way is absolutely incorrect. The way is absolutely unlogic. But the way that it is presented, it sounds to somebody who is not familiar with this topic, like this could be real. And this development in the eye, I kind of don't like this development. So let's come here to the end. And you know what? I think an advanced AI system, at least, will deliver the result that you want. And now let's come back to the very beginning of this video. Identify yourself. So who is you? What is the aim if you apply AI system? What is the goal that you want to achieve if you are a government, if you are a political party, if you are a global corporation, if you are a marketing agency, if you just want to influence as many people as possible? Would AI be the perfect tool for this now? And I think the answer is yes. More and more the answer is yes. So, hmm. Interesting. But you know, there is another way. The more we understand how those systems are working, the more we can do something against this. And if you're interested, hey, maybe you want to subscribe to this channel.